Now then, ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? It's Marty right here. Welcome on board. It's a pleasure to have you here today. In this video, we are going to review the 15mm f4.5 Lauer Shift 0D lens. Now before we start, I just want to do a quick shout out to the guys at Lauer for sending me a sample of this lens to test. However, this is not a sponsored or paid video, so I do not get to keep the lens. I will be sending this lens back after I finish reviewing them. Any reviews that I say on this video is entirely on my own input, without any input from Lauer at all. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Let's start with how much it costs. So we are going to base this in UK pound sterling. And of course, in different countries, you're going to get a different prices depending on where you are. But in UK pound sterling, this lens will cost you £1,249 from the official Lauer website. For me, that is not too bad considering the type of the lens that it is. Now, normally this lens can cost a fortune just purely because of the complexity of how this lens was made. It is available in five different mounts. So you're going to get this in Sony E-mount. Canon EF, Canon RF, Nikon F and Nikon Z but because I have the Sony cameras so we are going to work with the Sony E-mount right here. Now let's talk about the size and weight. The measurement can be shown somewhere around here. Here we have the lower 50mm f4.5 shift lens placed side by side next to the 15mm f2.0 0D as well as the Sony 2470 G Master and the 24 f1.4 g master lens just for you to get an idea of how big or small the lens is now the weight of the lens is 597 grams and it's not too heavy compared to the 2470 g master which weighs in at 880 grams now it does sticks out in front a little bit when you put them onto the camera but for me that's not a big problem because of the weight you have on the lens itself and when you also compare to the 2470 G Master or the bigger lens it's nothing really but of course there is a difference when you compare to a smaller lens like the 50mm f2 or the 24 1.4 G Master lens. Now in terms of functionality, the Lauer is a manual focus only lens. The shift capability of the lens allows you to shift up to plus or minus 11 millimeters. The maximum aperture of the lens is f4.5 and the minimum aperture of the lens is f22. And it has five aperture blades so when shooting at night you are going to get those hexagonal sort of shape you won't be getting any of those round bokeh. The minimum focusing distance for this lens is very impressive at 20 centimeters so you will be able to get real close to your subject but do watch out when you get real close to your subject because you're gonna get those background blur and because this is a manual focus only lens you're gonna be having a tricky time to nail those focus. So after having some time of using the lens I can say that the handling of the lens is not bad at all. Ergonomically it is quite well built and of course at first if you have never used or seen this lens before you are going to find it really strange at first with all these mechanism right here sticking out around here and there but once you get the hang of them you will be just fine. Now the lower 15mm f4.5 shift lens is made out of metal and so that means that it's gonna be durable and solid However, that does mean that the lens is going to be prone to scratch or marks on it. But the real worrying thing for me is not actually the body itself. It's actually the front glass. As you can see, the front glass bulges out in front like so. So that means that it's not going to have any protection on it whatsoever. So when you're shooting, outside you have to be careful with them because there's no lens hood and as far as I'm concerned there's no lens filter or something that available in the market that can protect this this front glass so this is something to bear in mind and you just have to be careful with it but it does have a metal front lens cap so you can feel a bit relief when you put the lens cap on in front you're gonna get some protection as a result now I do believe that the lens is not weather sealed as well so just be careful and bear that in mind when you're out shooting in the rain or the damp condition. So what is shift lens? A shift lens is basically a lens that lets you shift a part of your lens in a different direction to allow you to fix the perspective or vanishing points 
depending on the angle where you shoot. It's a perfect lens for architecture photography. Most of the architecture photography you see nowadays, you are going to see those perfectly aligned and fixed perspective as well as the vanishing point. For most architecture photographers, the last thing they want to see is those wonky looking buildings that converge into the middle of photos that makes a building look like an Egyptian pyramid. You want to showcase the building in the photo in the right perspective, so this type of shift lens is perfect for that. You will have heard about tilt shift lens as well in the past. Canon also produced a tilt shift lens and tilt shift lens is slightly different to the shift lens. With tilt shift lens, you have the ability to tilt as well as shift the lens. So you will be able to get those miniature sort of effects with shallow depth of field. And this lens is not that. It only allows you to shift the lens to fix the perspective. So I will just show you right now what all of these buttons and knobs are for and what they can do. So this is the locking mechanism right here. By turning it up like that, it will lock up the lens and it won't let your lens shift up and down and you can unlock it as well by doing something like this. And after you unlock it, you can shift the lens up and down like so. And the next thing you can do is to change the angle and direction of the shift as well. So if you want to shoot, say, an architecture on a landscape mode, you will have to turn it to zero degrees, like something like this. And you have to try and find the zero degrees, which is not something like this. And that will let you to move the lens up and down. And by the way, you can also do a vertical panorama with this lens as well by shifting up and down slowly as you take the photo as you go along. And same goes with if you want to shoot an architecture on a portrait mode. And now all you need to do is to turn them into 90 degrees like so. And when you shift the lens, you will be able to shift upwards like this and also downwards and when you shift the lens upward it will fix the perspective for you from the ground and if you shift the lens downward like this you will normally need to stand on a higher ground say on a building or something like that and then it will fix the perspective for you that way and now we will look at the image quality that's taken from the lens on my computer so we're going to switch on to my computer right now so as you can see from the shots that I've taken, it produces superb quality. The sharpness are there from center to corner, although at the corner you are going to see slight drop off compared to the center. And because this is a zero distortion lens as well, so you can hardly see any distortion within the image. All of the lines are almost perfectly straight, which is what you want for architecture photography. Last thing you want is a curvy looking building. There are one downside to the lens though. When it comes to controlling lens flare, it is not great. Especially if you were to shoot at night time and towards the street lights, you will see a huge amount of lens flare and smear on the image. Not ideal. However, I have found a solution for that. To combat those smear and lens flare, you need to shoot at a higher aperture if I go up to say f6.3 or f8, I will get those starburst effect instead and will provide a cleaner looking image compared to if you were to shoot at a lower aperture at f4.5. So that's one thing to bear in mind. But in terms of using this lens as a daytime street and architecture photography, this is a perfect lens for that. You fix those vanishing points and perspective and you will get a tidy looking image rather than those wonky looking building that looks like a Egyptian pyramid. For shooting at night time however, like I said previously, there are some limitations and you will need to adjust a little bit to make it work, which is to shoot at a higher aperture. So the million dollar question, who is this lens for? 
The Lawa 15mm f4.5 shift lens is a very niche lens that's designed for those people who want to get the perspective and varnishing points fixed before going into Lightroom. Now of course in Lightroom you can also fix the varnishing points and perspective but getting it fixed before it goes into post processing helps you save time and also help you compose an image to the way you want beforehand and if there are any fixes needed it's going to be minimal in post processing and you won't lose out on the frames and what I mean by that is when you fix your perspective in Lightroom often it will fix the perspective by pinching an image as well as twisting the angle image to get the perspective right and by that time you will lose part of the frames as well as the original composition itself so therefore this lens helps you fix those issues by almost 90% of the time before you go into Lightroom. Now the 10% of the time where it can't be fixed is probably because you're shooting a very very tall building and you're super close up to the building as well and there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to take step backwards so then the building won't appear to be out of proportion. So there you have it guys. I hope I covered most of the important part you need to know about the lens and I hope you have found this review useful. If so, don't forget to hit that like button and do also consider subscribe if you haven't yet. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions. And until then, I shall see you on the next one. See ya. Now the lower 15mm body is made of metal so it is quite durable and Now the lower 15mm f2.0 mm. oh, This stupid